This is like a time capsule. So many spaces that visitors can explore now really relate to Intrepid's function as an aircraft carrier, things like the flight deck and the hangar deck, but second deck has never been open to the general public before. This is going to be the largest restoration of historic spaces on Intrepid in many, many years. The medical department, the post office, the barbershop, they all played a significant role over the course of Intrepid's 30 years of service. These spaces really have these deep human and personal connections to the daily life of the crew. Sick Bay maintained the health of every single person on board the ship, from the commanding officer to the newest guy on board. You know, when you have over 3,000 guys in very close proximity, you know, somebody gets a cold, it can spread like wildfire. Everything from a, an airplane crash to um, burn on your stove. In our case, of course, we were also running a full-scale airport two decks up. Intrepid was hit by two kamikazes in one day during World War II. Sick Bay was overwhelmed with injured crew members. The kamikazes came in and all these planes were there and they all caught on fire. And my clothes caught on fire and I got shrapnel in my legs and back. So I was in Sick Bay for some time because my whole back was one big blister. A core part of our mission at the Intrepid Museum is making connections between history and technology and science. Visitors will get a chance to peek into the X-ray dark room where the X-ray technicians developed film. We'll take the ship's operating room that right now is empty and we will be adding back into it furnishings from the period and also adding this layer of augmented reality to help visitors visualize what it might have been like to conduct surgery on a ship while it's moving. And then we're also using technology for other sorts of immersive experiences. We're looking at projecting films in some of these spaces. One great item we have in the collection is a pharmacy compounding book. Visitors will be able to follow recipes from this book on a touch screen and mix medicines like they would have on the ship. In the Navy, your hair is not just your hair. There are rules and regulations about appropriate grooming. So um, the ship's barbershop really represents sort of you and your appearance and its relationship to this, this greater um, organization that you have joined. There were eight barbers for the enlisted men aboard this wonderful ship. They wanted to make a nice impression of the United States Navy and foreign ports. And everybody had to have a haircut regulation haircut and they allowed a flat top or a close cut haircut. Now after inspection was over, we let everybody do what they want. You want it cut out, you want a little taper in the back, you want a little curl in the front, we would do that. We'll be including some tactile interactives, giving visitors an opportunity to touch things down here. Uh, maybe sit in a barber's chair. The barber shop also really reflects the period of change in the Navy. So the 1960s and the 1970s, the Navy is really grappling with the role of race in their policies, changing its rules about grooming. So what does it mean to learn how to cut hair of different textures? How do you cut women's hair so it looks appropriate? The museum has a deep commitment to telling stories that may not be told as frequently. It's the experiences of people of color, um, women serving in the Navy. I'm standing in Intrepid's post office. This was the only way the sailors were in communication with their families. All these flight deck personnel come looking in the airplane. This is the plane that brings the mail, and everybody wants to know how many mailbags show up. And we used to wait for mail calls. I did miss my girlfriend. And she would also send me articles about what was going on back at home, the protests against the war and all of that kind of stuff. Even the smell of the perfume on her letters made me crazy. There was censorship of mail on board Intrepid related to um, revealing where Intrepid was. So these pieces of information were often cut out of letters. But now sailors have access to things like email or use of their phones. So how does communication technology change the experience for crew members? One of the particularly um, moving examples of correspondence we have in the collection are audio recordings between Richard Moran, who was a pilot on board Intrepid, and his wife and his children. Well, today I became a hero, everyone. 
they had a giant exercise in which all the pilots who won their medals got them. He also played the saxophone, so he would play some music and send this back to his family as well. On the other side, we have um, recordings from his wife describing life at home and also having their children say hello to him. Today is Thursday, May 26th. <laughs> who wants to say hi first? Me. Daddy. 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 Dad, I love you. I know a song, but I'm not going to sing it till tomorrow. Daddy, we're all set to go to bed now and we're going to say our prayers for you. Keep our daddy safe. I love daddy. Richard Moran did not survive his time on Intrepid. He was a pilot and he crashed into the ocean. And we're preserving um, the story of that, unfortunately, really ended here. Our curatorial and collections team has done lots of digging to find people who served in these spaces, find people who experienced them, and hear their stories. The Intrepid Museum is always expanding the idea of what a museum can be. This project is one of the most ambitious things we've ever undertaken. It's a huge milestone for us, and visitors are going to be amazed.